Hello, Paul here. Um, it's September 23rd, 2023. I'm here with Felicia and we're uh, finally getting back together after um, my travels and um, it's been quite a day here today. So if you see behind me um, and uh, special thanks to Felicia for watching everything while I was gallivanting. Um, but if you look behind me, we have all of these squash and I'll pick a good one here. Yeah, so this is what they look like. And um, these are an amazing food. They'll keep for like a year and a half, uh, you know, up to who knows when. We don't know how long they keep food because we've never tested them. We always get the I wouldn't one. say a year and a half, maybe. But they'll keep till the next year's harvest. Um, and uh, some of them will rot, but a lot of them will be good. And so we had a great group of volunteers today. Thanks for all the volunteers that came today. Um, we had a lot of patches that had to be uh, harvested, and this is pretty much what we got. We have some that are inside that we're going to um, save for seed, and so the better specimens we save for seed. And um, and there's a lot of fruits coming in now. We have a lot of, um, I'll, I'll get some behind you here. Um, We've got peppers and okra coming in. Always in the summer, they're really hitting hard. They're doing great, so we're donating those as well. And um, we've got flowers. So there's a group of uh, widows at um, Trevecca Towers, and um, they get uh, lonely and they like beauty in their life to keep them from feeling depressed. It's very encouraging to have flowers. They're like nature's antidepressant. You know, this is much better than any of the. Uh, um, things brought to you by your uh, pharmaceutical companies. If you look at this, you will feel encouraged and you'll see great beauty. And you can put them in your hair, right, Felicia? Oh, I took them out already. These guys yes. can do that too. Oh yeah. Yeah, even guys with that, even bald men can <laughs> do it. Matches that. your shirt too. Yeah, it matches my shirt. It's cool your shirt. And um, so we cut these up. There's been a group of uh, like uh, 20, young 20 something year old girls that's been coming every Monday and picking these for the uh, for the women at Trevecca Towers. and. Um, we're, we're really happy that uh, we can do that. And they've been so easy to plant. Mm -hmm. And we're going to collect the seed from them. And then my neighbor, Scott, has been uh, letting me get uh, pears from his uh, tree. And uh, thanks, Scott. And um, these are awesome. We juice them. We uh, bake you can em. bake them. And they are absolutely divine. Um, mm -hmm. These are um, passion fruit that grow in the field. And um, <clears throat> and they're not quite ready yet, but we, we harvested a few just to show everyone and to check. Also known as Maypop and when Maypop. you step when you indigenously known as Maypop but um, when you step on them they pop. Yeah. That's why. Yep. And they're really neat fruit and they grow well here. And then we've got um these um muscadine, muscadine grapes. And um these are really delicious and um we've had a really good harvest this year of mm -hmm. muscadine grapes. And you have to wait till they're really soft and then I just suck the juice out of them and spit the rest out. And um, as demonstrated by Felicia, <laughs> that, that makes me happy. Uh, you can chew them and you know do all that with them. Um, I'm getting tons of okra now, so if you're in my area and you like okra, now I eat the okra raw, it's really good right off the plant, oh, yeah. it's really fresh. Um, you don't have to cook it and fry it and do all that to it. It's also good dehydrated, like if you cut it up into slices or slice it in half, open it somehow, um, and then just put some seasonings like some of the paprika, salt chili yeast, whatnot, dehydrate them, really good. Yeah, thanks. Yep. And um, you can, if you're in the area, you're welcome to come down and harvest some okra. Um, every two days you get about 10 pounds. So it's like five pounds a day and um, it just comes in like crazy and it has to be picked or the plants will stop producing. And we'll be going for another five five weeks probably um, with okra. So, um, well no, three weeks, mid-October, oh my goodness. Four weeks. Yeah. Maybe four, four weeks. May, maybe four weeks. And so it's great to put in the freezer. It's great to eat raw. It's great to put in a stir fry. You can even put one or two of them in a smoothie, but it gets kind of gelatinous, but it keeps all the stuff from sticking to the side of the Vitamix. So it's kind of cool. If you don't use too much, if you use too much, it, it, it's a bit like snot. So, you know, I, I caution against that. But uh, someone was asking when the garden's over. And here's the thing. You know, God is a faithful God. He's producing food all year round. He's not like producing food six months a year and then, you know, just starve the rest of the year. He's producing food all year round. We have uh, Jerusalem artichokes mm. and the squash that we'll have in the middle of winter. And we'll be sending out to our distribution points at the uh, Heimerdinger Foundation and at uh, the Branch right. Ministries. And National Food Project. I've been dropping off to yep. them when y'all were up. 
good. And then the other one was the uh, Trebekah mm -hmm. Towers uh, group. So um, we're going to have food all year round. So come to the garden, and in the in the winter months, we'll also be sprouting in jars, and I'll be giving demonstrations how to do that. I do that all year round, <coughs> and it's a great way to get really abundant, abundant, nutrient dense food just by sprouting lentils in jars or bowls, and it's off the charts uh, nutritious, and um, you will run faster and jump higher, and you will not be as uh, you know. And play soccer twice a week at 61. <laughs> yeah, play soccer twice a week at 51 at 61. It's not that it's, it's not that exciting really when I'm playing soccer, but at least I'm out there and I'm running and I'm not in pain. And uh, it's a lot of fun hanging out with the kids. And they haven't asked me to stop yet, but they will at some point. <laughs> they say, "Man, you're just too old." But um, but it's good just to be alive and to be active. And you really, when God created man, He put him in the garden. And when you get into the garden. Um, and you start eating the food from the garden instead of all the ultra palatable foods that you get at all these drive-throughs and, and these ultra processing ultra processed foods are being shown in studies now to cause really bad diseases like cancer and heart disease and all sorts of MS and all sorts of strokes and really bad stuff that's uh, affecting so many people in my age group. So come to the garden. Um, so we meet here Saturdays at 9 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and uh, I promise all you can eat and you can take stuff home if you volunteer and then we'll have tons left over. Do you want to mention what we did this week? Yeah, uh, we'll have tons left over for the food uh, projects and then what did we do this week, Felicia? We planted... We took out an entire field, um, tilled, uh, mowed it, tilled it, tilled it again and then broadcast planted and direct sowed in rows. Um, we've got kale, collards, broccoli, snow, snap, snow peas. Snow peas. Uh, red Russian kale. Arugula, red Russian kale, radishes, spinach, because for some reason I feel the need. I'm going to make spinach work this year. I'm going to make it work. It's going to work. We're believing in it. It's yeah. going to happen. Um, and that's just the beginning. There's so much more that's going to go in the ground. We're going to do turnips. We're going to do so many turnips. Those are going in soon, too. Yeah, the turnip greens and the roots are really mm -hmm. good in the winter. We're, uh, beets. We did beets. We're going to do more beets. We're going to do chard. We're going to do everything. So there will be food in the winter because those are most of those things I mentioned, not excluding the radishes, but everything else and the beets oh. are brassicas and brassicas thrive and love the winter. They do really well in the winter and then as soon as the first frost hits, everything becomes so much sweeter. So it's really delectable, it's wonderful, it's full of nutrients and those dark, dark leafy greens are just fantastic. So we will have so many of those in the next coming months and over the winter. So Yeah, she may, Felicia makes a really good point in, in the... Um, in the um, in the winter, the greens get really sweet. So when you eat kale or, or chard, you know, a lot of times it just tastes like blah. You want to spit it out, and you got to sort of hide it in a smoothie with a bunch of dates and bananas or whatever you do, or cook it, you know, cook it with pig fat, you know, just to get it to be palatable. But in the winter, when you come out here and it's cold out, and you start eating those greens, they're really sweet and really good. And you know, we're all on a health journey. You know, we all have to take care of our bodies and steward our bodies and. For me, it was arthritis, and I had a lot of foods that were causing inflammation and giving me really bad arthritis to the point where I needed a knee replacement. And um, serious stuff. Yeah, I was about to walk, start walking with a cane, but then I changed my diet, and everything got better within, like, hours, like, within a day. And so um, we're all on a health journey, but and, and, and I know you guys out there are on a health journey. You know, sometimes you might think it's just weight. You know, you got to lose a little weight, but then you find out that's really part of a bigger problem of holding toxicity because the uh, toxicity is held in the fat cells in your body. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you start unraveling this in your, your own health journey. I really would encourage you to make the garden a big part of that um, because you will find amazing microbiology and these soil organisms that get into your gut and they start doing amazing things in your, in your gut and your intestines and it's called microbiome and prebiotics and probiotics and postbiotics and I can't go into all it all. Biotics. What is it? All the biotics. All the biotics, yeah. So biotic is just the Greek word for life. Life, yes, thank you. My linguist camera, yes. camera holder over there, she knows <laughs> that uh, we want life, you know, and you'll find some life in the garden and there'll be spiritual discussions in the garden. We're not oh. talking about uh, reruns of days of our lives when we're out here, you know. We're talking about how to help poor people we're talking about how to help sick people. We're talking about our own health journeys and really 
uh, building deep, meaningful relationships, right, Felicia? <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, every like whenever I'm out here, it's like the discussions I have with everyone here. Of course, we've got our regulars, out, our, our, our friends, our regulars um, that come out here that we know and we talk with that we you know have you know pick up discussions with, and then there's our newcomers that we're always like, hey, how did you find us? You know, what brought you here? What like what is your individual story? And every single discussion that I've had, I mean, from my years of farming, this is my sixth year in agriculture, actually. Um, but the discussions that you have in a farm are, are discussions you will never have anywhere else. And it's really interesting, and I've always found that very poignant, to where for some reason, when your hands are in the dirt, when you're sweating, when you're tired, when you know something is biting you or whatnot, the discussions that you have are so much more meaningful and so much more deep that it's just, you, you can't leave unhappy. Like I've, every time I drive out this driveway, I am just like, my face hurts from smiling. Yeah, well that's good, that's the problem that was. So <laughs> one of the things, one of the lessons I learned in a garden is a garden will tolerate a lot of things. You can walk on the plants, you can pick the wrong plants, you can plant it at the wrong time, you can forget to water it, you can forget to weed it, but the one thing that a garden won't tolerate, I've said this before, you guys know the answer? I'm scared to know. Neglect. Yeah, that's it. If you go long periods of time without weeding, watering, tending, it'll it'll go. It'll it'll it will not forgive you. The weeds will come in, and the weeds are like bad habits in your life. You know, they just come in and 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 like uh, they uh, fester. They fester and they they grow exponentially. And so you know, this is true of our of our marriages. It's true of our relationships with our kids. It's true of our um, relationships with our parents. So call your mother. <coughs> Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since you called your mother, your grandmother, or your dad, or whoever. So these, none of these things, now our relationships won't tolerate neglect, and, the, and um, our relationships are what makes our lives great. And when you come to a garden group with people that are trying to help the poor, um, it does great things for your relationships, because those people are not selfish people. They're, they're here to give and help those less fortunate, and you make the best friends, and that's, oh, yeah. that's just an amazing thing about it. So, do you want me to take the camera, Melanie, and you can come and talk and say anything? Okay, you She's begging wanna... no. Okay. No, I mean, I don't have much more to add. You okay. might want to mention about the garden huckleberries. Ah, uh, yes, the garden huckleberries. So out there, but I'm about to mow it. We get these lovely little blackberries that my wife just thinks are the bomb. And she uh, puts them on yogurt and whatever she puts them on in there. They're garden huckleberries, and they grow wild. I haven't figured out how to grow them. I take the berries, and I take the seeds, and I grow them. I think I have to freeze them first, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to. Um, I'm going to put some in the freezer this year after I dry them, or maybe before I dry them. And uh, so we're trying to figure out new fruits and new plants. So if you know of a fruit or a plant that we haven't mentioned, come on over and help me because I'm not really that good at this. But if I get something that works, I just keep doing it over and over and over again, like the okra or the squash. You know, this is an example. I mean, I put things in the ground and they work. But there's been 20 things I put in the ground that haven't worked, and uh, but I forget all about them, and I don't dwell on those. I just focus on what works. Which is why I am desperately trying to do spinach again. This yes, year. yes, and spinach. <laughs> I think we've got it in a good spot this year. I, I think it's going to work. So um, that's an earful, and thanks for watching our videos, and thank you to all my friends on the island of Nisiris in Greece. So many of them came up to me and said, we watch your videos all the time. And the reason there hasn't been a video out lately is that I've been away. I've been visiting you in person. So, um, but thanks to all our fans out there and um, on YouTube and different places where we have videos. Uh, we love you too. And so we, even though we're exhausted after harvesting all this, we wanted to do a little video for you because you're near and dear to our hearts. Lots of love. God bless. Bye-bye.